Hello everybody, uh, welcome to unit number two. Uh, I guess I'm becoming a better YouTuber, I'm becoming an influencer, so let's see how this goes. Anyways, unit number two, today we're going to be talking about the types and patterns of innovation. So let's go quickly through our my five minutes, six, five to eight minutes of explaining all the concepts very quickly. Right, so first of all, we have innovation products versus process. So in the innovation product versus process, we're going to see that some, some things is the process itself of designing something new, something innovative. If we think about, for example, smartphones, smartphones was a product itself. But when we talk about process innovation, we can think of how we can make something more productive. Let's say sometimes we have a line of production and I'm going to mention here Reebok for example Reebok is now using 3d printing for the materials or well for producing the shoes itself so yes in, in two ways it's innovation of the product because it's a new printed is a printed shoe but on the other case it's also producing faster because they don't need the hand hand manufacturing so they can they can they can produce non-stop okay very good so those are the products versus the process here we have some examples of Honda hybrid side vehicle and Walmart process of supply chain. You know, there's there's no product itself, it's just a process. Now we have the radical innovation versus the incremental innovation. So in this case, what we see here is just very simple. In the radical innovation, we see something completely new, something it hasn't seen before, and that has no compatibility with the previous product as compared to the incremental innovation. So here, for example, for the radical innovation, we can see Canon. Canon, they, they produced the, the individual printers. That was something that was not hasn't been seen. And they wanted to beat Xerox, and then they did it very well. The same thing for incremental innovation. Incremental innovation, we see just, just a small, slight changes, and we still see majority of the components working in the same fashion when we talk about smartphones that's incremental innovation very good topic number three component versus architectural innovation so in this case we're just talking of a, the component means we only change some smaller things maybe in a car we can just change the design slightly just to look a little bit better but internally it still is the same thing now when we're talking about an architectural innovation talking about here the complete thing changes this is the case of like electric cars electric cars already we can see that the whole engine changes the whole structure changes the market has to change because we have to have the plug that the, the plug points for for them to charge the car so we can see that is a very very uh, a very strong change very good so now let's go back to competing enhancing versus competing destroying so like I said in this case when we have the competing enhancing we're talking about that uh, we have add-ons to the to the component so that it performs better and better and better so that's competing enhancing so when we talk about for example laptops usually laptops are the competing enhancing we just increase the memory we increase the hard drive we increase the graphics, but in general, it, we continue using computers exactly in the same way. Now, when we're talking about competing and destroying, we can talk about, for example, digital cameras to analog cameras. Analog cameras have a system, a, they have the, the films, the developing of the films, and that completely changed with the digital cameras. So what that we can see that was competing and destroying, Kodak, Kodak lost all their, Kodak and Fujifilm, both of them lost majority of their power because of this competing and destroying product now we talk here about technology s curve and the technology cycle so let me go first to the s curve in the s curve i want to go through the image okay so the image means we have the more effort that we put the higher the performance of that product will be meaning the more effort we put the more money we put the more men we put on that product at some point of time we'll have better and better performance okay so we have to put a lot of effort in order for a certain product to reach its top its peak and then after that there's a limit there's something that cannot be done anymore okay 
So when we're talking, for example, right now about chatbots, right now, chatbots are still in a very early stage. So what we see is that the scientists, data scientists are putting a lot of effort in order for them to perform better. There will be a point of time in the, in the, in the, in the far future where this, this chatbots will be very good. They will be able to understand very good the human behavior, uh, well, the, the, the conversations with the human. So, uh, like I said, now it's a time where they are putting a lot of effort, but the limit of that technology is still far away. Okay, very good. So now let's go to the technology cycles. And for the technology cycles, I rather explain it with a graphical representation. So actually, the S curve and and uh, and and the curve of adapters is very similar because at the point of time that a product reaches the top of its performance is where late majority or majority of the people starts to get it and then people move to a new one once this technology is obsolete then they move on to start the cycle again okay so here we have for example innovators innovators are those guys that send up Apple to check the new phone are those ones who really want to check the new features of all the new products the same as early adopters early uh, well usually innovators and early adopters are those ones who uh, regardless the product is performing perfectly or that is very high in its cost they still go and purchase it but then early majority and late majority they wait until they realize well this product has some good value it has a good price then I'll go for it and the laggards are just your auntie that gets <laughs> gets an old phone from you that you don't use anymore. As simple as that. Okay, very good. So now let's go quickly to the last topic: dominant design. Dominant design is when a product reaches its peak, meaning that the company the company has been designing a certain product. There's a lot of trial and error, but then it reaches a point where it works perfectly they have the technology they have the knowledge and they decide to put all their resources on it because they know it will work perfectly this is the case for example of peloton peloton company firstly they were trying a little bit innovating with a uh, with a uh, home workout and these bicycles that are high tech they, they tried they see it worked they kept on improving and now they are at a point of time where their, their, their architecture is very stable. They are working very well with it and they became very, very successful. They are, they are, they are moving in a very good direction. Okay, Very good. So with that, we're done for the day. Again, if you want to know more things, and then you can read the examples and you can read the book. And uh, I, uh, I think that should be all. Thank you so much.